Today I'll be showing you how I multibox WoW Classic. <laughs> Multiboxing is playing multiple characters at once. Now, this can be done a few ways. I use a software called IS Boxer. It's pretty much the premier multiboxing software out there. Although you can multibox with something like Auto Hotkey, I'm going to be showing you how I multibox using IS Boxer. Okay, so if you're going to start off with a new team, you need to set up the new team in IS Boxer. I'm not going to be going over this in my video since IS Boxer has a great video about this already. Link in the description. I'm also going to put a link in the description of the IS Boxer Discord. There are a lot of great people in there and they may be able to answer some of your questions. So you have your first team made and there are a few things you want to make sure you have. Firstly, some nice add-ons. I would recommend Leatrix Plus and EMA. Leatrix lets you do some cool things like automatically vendor graze when you talk to a vendor, automatically repair when you talk to a vendor, and automatically dismount or stand up when you try to use an ability. EMA has a ton of options as it is a multiboxing add-on. I personally just use it for my team to auto accept invites to party and auto set the loot to free for all. Everything else I pretty much have turned off. I also like that it gives me status updates on my characters, telling me if they get interrupted, rooted, stunned, and so on. When you initially set it up, you will need to tell it which is your main character that you normally play from. That's the little crown here. There are a ton of other add-ons I would suggest using, like Bartender, Extended Character Stats, Questy, but chances are if you're looking into multiboxing WoW Classic, you already have the add-on basics down. The only other big thing I wanted to suggest is a Unit Frames add-on. I personally use Luna, which is nice since it has Heal Comp built into it. You can see, when my Druid starts to heal, it shows the incoming heal in green. The main reason I like Luna is how customizable it is. I can see cast bars from my whole team, set up to see their buffs and debuffs, it's just a great add-on. I'll get into it more later when I talk about how I do healing. So in IS Boxer, when you set up a team by default, it will basically be key cloning keys 1 through equals on your keyboard. So when I press the 2 key, the 2 key gets sent to all 5 windows. This is the meat and potatoes of multiboxing. For this team, I'm mainly using two keybinds to control my casters, 3 and 5. 3 is their single target ability, and 5 is their AoE. I use other keybinds on here. 2, for example, is for my Warlock to put up Curse of Elements on bosses. 7 is their self buffs. 8 is their single target castable buffs, if they have one. And Shift 8 is for them to use group buffs on the party. My druid is the party's tank, and his keybinds are a little different. I want the 3 and 5 keys to do nothing on him while in bear form. That way I can choose what he does while my casters are doing single target or AoE. For him I have V set up as maul, 4 as swipe, and one of my mouse buttons as demoralizing roar. The macro on the 3 key here is simply a start attack macro to make sure that he is auto attacking while I'm doing single target DPS. Let me go through each of my 3 DPS quick and show you what their damage looks like. For my Warlock, I originally had a cast sequence macro that would weave life tap into shadow bolts. Now this is unideal for two reasons. One, on the short fights it wastes time life tapping where it's not needed. And two, on long fights he'd still run out of mana eventually. This cast sequence was just me trying to make his mana last a little longer. I now use an add-on called Gnome Sequencer Enhanced. What it does is it works just like a cast sequence, but it simply goes to the next line each button pressed, where a cast sequence will only go to the next thing if it successfully did the thing before. Now this is still not super great, as he sometimes life taps when he has plenty of mana, but he will always cycle back to a life tap if he is out of mana on a longer boss fight, and he'll still be able to DPS. For his AoE I use only Hellfire. With this Hellfire macro, he will only cast Hellfire again if he is not channeling a spell meaning I can spam the keybind and he'll only recast Hellfire after the one he is channeling runs out. The mage is a bit simpler. His single target is simply Frostbolt, and his AoE is simply Arcane Explosion. In the past, I used a cast sequence to weave in Cone of Cold every 10 seconds or so. This can be great when killing mobs that like to run away at low health, as the Cone of Cold will slow them. And if you have a Fire Mage, you can make a Gnome Sequencer macro to add in Blast Wave to the AoE, but just using Arcane Explosion is great. 
The Shaman just casts Lightning Bolt for single target. No Chain Lightning as it is a ton of mana and would probably cause him to pull aggro on secondary mobs it hits. Now this is where it gets a little complicated. Shamans don't have a great spammable AoE like Hellfire or Arcane Explosion. So I created this cast sequence for him. It's important to note that I have the talents to reduce the explosion time of Fire Nova Totem. So he Fire Nova Totems, cast Chain Lightning, Fire Nova Totem explodes just before he drops a Magma Totem, then he proceeds to Chain Lightning and Lightning Bolt until about 15 seconds in, when he can Fire Nova Totem again. My Shaman also has extra abilities on 6 and Shift 6. These are both cast sequence totem drops. 6 is my default, and Shift 6 I use for any dungeon specific set of totems I want to drop. This one is set up with Grounding Totem for the Satyr boss in Dire Mall East. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing that IS Boxer also does with the default 1 through equals keys. They add auto assist in. It's built into the key. So if I hit any of these keys, 1 through equals, my team will target what I'm targeting. This has worked fine for me all the way through level 58 so far. If I ever raid on these characters or do some more complicated boss fights, I might have to set up manually targeting though. Now, when we look at my priest, you'll see he has nothing on 3 or 5. And that's what he does. Nothing. Until I want him to heal. Leveling up, I used to have him wand, single target, or maybe even smite, but I realized it was doing such little damage and it made it take longer to get a heal out if he was in the middle of casting or wanding. Now if I'm questing or doing something else that doesn't really require healing, I can have him wand or spam a spell like my caster DPS. Now I'll show you about healing. I've turned on my click bars so you can see what it normally looks like. Now I'm not going to explain to you how to set up the click bars in IS Boxer. It's fairly complicated and I kind of stumbled through it myself. Plus, a video like that already exists, I'll link it in the description. iXboxer has a great video on exactly how to set up click bars like the ones I have. So this big one is my healing click bar, and it only affects my priest. I have four different keybinds set up that only work when my mouse is inside the click bar. When I perform one of the actions, my priest mouse clones whatever window I'm playing from, and then casts the spell. Left click is max rank greater heal. Right click is max rank flash heal. Mouse wheel up is max rank power word shield. And mouse wheel down is max rank renew. With this I can heal anyone in my party that needs to get healed. You might notice that's a lot of max rank spells. You may also be asking, why no down ranking? Well, a few reasons. First, down ranking is less heals per second. And I do a lot of big pulls and I need to pump out heals quick. Second, downranking is meant to reduce mana expenditure and keep a healer healing for a long time, like a 5 minute boss fight. Now, I don't do any trash pulls that last longer than about 20 seconds, and most bosses are dead in under a minute, so I don't really need to downrank. Plus, in dungeons you can drop one big heal and then not heal for a while, getting the full spirit regen going, something you can't really do in raids. And thirdly, downranking only really works if you have some bonus healing on gear. At this point, my priest is up to over 300 healing, but at lower levels you'll have little to none. Now if I ever end up raiding, of course I would change these heals and use some down ranks. But for questing or dungeoning, it's not really needed. Now, once you figure out how to make a click bar for healing, you can take the exact same principles and use them for dispelling. This more slender click bar on the left here is my dispelling click bar. Now I have four different things here as well. Left click, my priest dispels magic, my mage decurses, and my shaman poison cleanses. Right click, my priest cleanses disease, my mage decurses, and my shaman poison cleanses. Mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down are for my shaman to drop poison or disease cleansing totem, cleansing the whole group. But my mage and priest will also try to single target dispel on mouse wheel. Now this last little click bar here, more of a click button, is pretty simple. I click in here, and my priest casts Prayer of Healing. Pretty good AoE healing. This method of click bar healing only works if all the party frames are the same on every window, so you need unit frames that you can order alphabetically. I think the Blizzard raid frames can do this, but not the party frames as far as I know. 
One more thing I want to talk about that doesn't seem important, but it is. Follow and stop follow. Now IS Boxer by default has follow as Alt F, and this works from any window. See, I can come over here, hit Alt F again, and these guys follow me. And the same from here. What it doesn't have by default is a stop follow keybind. The best way I've found to do this is to make the key map in IS Boxer and have it send the turn key to your followers. For me, I use SEF to move instead of WAD. So when I hit Alt S on my main window, all four of my followers receive a split second of the S key, which turns them imperceptibly to the left. Now this is important. You could use the move back or move forward keys to break follow, but this will interrupt spellcasting. But turning has no effect on spellcasting and will work well for you. So they're following me. I start casting, I hit my stop follow, and the spell keeps going. So on a mob, it might look something like this. I'm spamming the three key for all my guys the single target, and I'm using V to maul on my druid. Now for an AoE pack, it might look something like this. I would hop myself up and use Renew. Pull some mobs. This might be hard as I have a tiny aggro radius on these guys. Then I usually get about five demoralizing roars in. Of course, I'd be dropping totems with my six keybind at this time. And then I hit, and then I'm gonna spam four to have my druid swipe, and five to have my boys AOE. Thank you for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you think there's anything I should have covered but didn't, let me know in the comments. And if you have a direct question for me, you can contact me in my Discord, link in the description. Happy multiboxing!